Oxidative phosphorylation is a process that occurs in cells in order to generate ATP. If we think of eukaryotes, the oxidative phosphorylation occurs within the mitochondria. And if we have our mitochondria, we have our inner mitochondrial membrane with these folds on it called cristae. And it's on this inner mitochondrial membrane where oxidative phosphorylation occurs. This inner mitochondrial membrane is selectively permeable, which means that it lets some molecules or ions across and not others. And that is an important feature which allows oxidative phosphorylation to occur. Um, so here we have our inner mitochondrial membrane. Mitochondrial membrane. And down here we have the mitochondrial matrix. So the matrix is this part here inside the mitochondria. And out here is our intermembrane space, which is the space between the inner and the outer membrane of mitochondria. So oxidative phosphorylation has two parts. It has our electron transport chain and it has ATP synthase. And those processes that occur are coupled together. So our electron transport chain is comprised of four complexes. So complex one, complex one I'll just draw like this, but it actually has a portion that extends outside of the membrane. And this actually transports protons from one side of the membrane, from the matrix, out into the intermembrane space. Then we have our complex two. So complex uh, two, so one here, two. Complex two doesn't transport protons. Then complex three, we also have protons transported across. And so does complex four, which is our last one. So you can see that we have a lot of protons moving from the matrix into the intermembrane space. And that means that our intermembrane space has a higher concentration of protons compared to our matrix, which has a lower concentration of protons. And that's really important for this process and ATP generation. Now, where do the electrons come from that form part of this electron transport chain? They come from two places. When our fuels, such as our um, carbohydrates, are oxidized in the cell, we have the electrons being passed from those fuel molecules onto NADH, so to, oh, sorry, NAD plus to give us NADH. So we have this produced in reactions such as glycolysis and also to FADH2 in a process such as the TCA cycle. So they have a pair of electrons and those molecules are re-oxidized and the electrons, a pair of them, are passed on from NADH to complex one and we then get NAD plus and FADH2. And we have our pair of electrons being transferred across. Um, those electrons then flow through the electron transport chain. So from NADH, they go to complex one. We have another molecule in here, an electron carrier and ubiquinone. And so they come through here to complex three or through complex one and then on to complex four. And those electrons ultimately are used to reduce molecular oxygen to water. As this happens, we have our proton gradient being produced. So we are high concentration of protons. So our electrons are coming from these molecules, moving across to end up and in water and protons are moved across the membrane. And that proton gradient drives ATP synthase. 
So here's ATP synthase. The protons come through from an area high of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And as that happens, it produces ATP, which is our currency in the cell. ATP is used in a lot of different reactions from ADP plus our inorganic phosphate. You can see from here how the reactions are coupled. We need electron transport to occur to give us the high concentration of protons, which then is used to drive ATP synthesis. So that's our concept of oxidative phosphorylation.